sun is shining, dog woods are coming in blue. Put on your white dress, yeah, cause a baby, it's a good day for Mary and you. I call my mama and daddy, baby, you call yours too. Put on your white dress, yeah, cause a baby, it's a good day for Mary and you. I know you by now, which means I know what you're thinking about. Your friends, they keep asking about us. Every day passing, it's time this fairy tale came true. Baby, the sun is shining, dark woods are coming in blue. Put on your white dress, yeah, cause baby, it's a good day for marrying you. I call my mama and daddy, baby, you call yours too. Put on your white dress, yeah, cause baby, it's a good day for marrying you. Give this woman to be married? Her mother and I. <laughs> we make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are gathered here in the sight of God and of his church to witness and bless the joining together of this man and this woman in holy marriage. This is an honorable estate which God himself has instituted and blessed and by which he gives us a picture of the very communion of Christ and his bride, the church. God has both established and sanctified marriage and has promised to bless therein all who love and trust in him and who seek to give him their faithful worship and service for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. The union of husband and wife and heart, body and mind is intended by God for their mutual joy, for the help and comfort given one another in prosperity and adversity, and when it is God's will, for the procreation of children and their nurture in the knowledge and love of the Lord. Therefore, marriage is not to be entered into inadvisedly or lightly, 
but reverently, deliberately, and in accordance with the purposes for which it was instituted by God. Please be seated. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now I was seen in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, and I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. So now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 13. You all doing okay? <laughs> Grant, Stephanie, today is a memorable day. A day you have looked, see I've got my own little toast, right? You should have been there last night at the uh, rehearsal dinner. Everyone had something wonderful to say about Grant and Stephanie. Maybe lean one side or the other. but So I hope this is a good memory for you too, because it's a memorable day, a day you've looked forward to with eager anticipation. It's a day that at least there's a few people out here that have been thinking, finally, right? <laughs> it's about time. And you had in mind who you wanted here today, and they all fit, and there's room. There's still room, see? There's, <laughs> you want to move up, there's room. And they're here to share your experience, to witness your vows to one another, and um, of all the people on your guest list, the most important one is you've invited the Lord uh, to witness and bless this day. What a wonderful thing. Well, you made some choices. You made uh, the choice to date. You made the choice to become engaged. And how long after the first date did the engagement occur? Can you recall that? Two and a half years. Two and a half years. Okay. No one was counting. <laughs> You chose to marry, and now on this day, you have chosen to stand before your Lord, Jesus Christ, before your family, before your friends, and pledge your love and declare your faithfulness. What a blessed day. Grant and Stephanie went through a premarital counseling course, right, called Prepare and Enrich. And um, every time you see a wedding, that's always the more challenging part, is all that counseling. Your pastor met with you like five or six times, an hour and a half a whack. This is a piece of cake compared to that, right? Pastor Gary, he's here, right? Pastor Gary, there he is. It begins with an inventory, a rather long inventory. You're probably like, what in the world? I took a SAT test that was shorter than this. What in the world? And it leads to all these different exercises to um, show you that marriage is basically not just two individuals, but it's a we. It's a team. Um, it's a group uh, working together. And if you're Christians, it's a group of husband and wife and Lord. And that's the we. And the marriage with the Lord is a successful marriage. A marriage with the Lord is God-pleasing. And a marriage with the Lord involves two things. Piece of cake, you just got to write it down, remembering and forgetting. Right? Piece of cake. And I was thinking about what to share today, and I thought of an acrostic to help you. And I had to look up to make sure I understood the difference between an acronym and an acrostic, because Stephanie would hold me to it. <laughs> So it's an acrostic, and I thought of one acrostic to help you remember this day, in addition to all the other things to help you remember. And uh, the first letter in our acrostic is B. B stands for the Bible. Uh, the basic instructions before leaving earth. Remember that song back in the, uh, the 90s? That was a great one. Colossians 3.16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. God's Word is where we learn of our Savior, where we learn of His death and resurrection, all to pay the price for all our sin. Um, God's Word is where we learn guidance and direction for life, not just uh, living my own life, but living my life as part of a, of a team, as a we, as a marriage. And while there are many ways to be in the Word of God and have it dwell in you richly, I encourage you all to engage in some sort of family devotion, if you haven't done that. You know, sometime together around God's Word, and in prayer. Um, 
It may be a little awkward. It may be do it already. I know I haven't talked to you, but it may be a little awkward. Some people don't, but I think it'll bless your marriage. And for those out there that do it, they'll tell you it definitely will bless your marriage. I've known Stephanie for over 15 years, and I'm sure running through her head right now, she says, don't talk about that. Don't talk about that. It's all good stuff. Um, I don't have any, ch- I have one son, I don't have any daughters, so Stephanie's kind of like the niece I never had, because my, anyway. What a blessing. And we, were, we shared a class together called Confirmation, and Confirmation was a two-year, basically a two-year Bible study, uh, learning the basics of the Christian faith, or relearning the basics of the Christian faith, because I'm sure you knew a lot of it when you got there. And after that period of instruction, um, the Confirmand would stand up and confirm that they were indeed a believer in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So, Bible, Bible, the first letter in our acrostic. Well, the next letter is accept, A, accept. Uh, Romans 15, 7, uh, words it this way. Accept one another then, as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. Well, what does it mean to accept? Well, basically, it just means to, to have mercy, to have mercy, and this is to the church, but especially in the marriage, to have mercy on one another. Because there's going to be times where you think you're right, and, and you may be, and you think you're right, you may be, and you may be both right from a different perspective. But to accept one another, to recognize that Christ died for the, each of you and for all. He died for all. Um, and for those who call upon him in faith, he has accepted them into his family. And if we are accepted in God's family... We gotta accept one another, right? Especially in marriage. So it may be tempting to remember faults and failures and sins. There's gonna be a temptation to hold them against one another too. You may not face that temptation. Who's the better remember? Who's got the better memory, by the way? Uh Oh. (laughs) So there's this temptation, Grant. (laughs) But God calls upon us to forgive. God calls upon us to forgive. So the first two letters of our acrostic to help you remember this day, Bible and accept. Bible and accept. Pretty easy, right? Bible and accept. But on this day, God would also want you to strive to forget. We heard that 1 Corinthians 13. Thank you for reading it. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Wow. Keeps no record of wrongs. Um, goes on to say, love is not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. There's a lot of good things it says about love. And that really is God's love for us. I mean, the only love that is is like that is God's love. So we can aspire to uh, approach that kind of love, but it's his love for us. And love, I want to focus on, love keeps no record of wrongs. So love is not just about remembering, but it's also about forgiving. And by God's grace, maybe one day, uh, forgetting. You never know. Well, your marriage may be made in heaven, but it's going to be lived here on earth, right? In northern Alabama, I assume. And because we're sinful by nature, there's one thing we do really well, and that is sin. And, you know, if you heard all these folks yesterday talk about these two, we, we were, if you could perform a miracle, we would have sainted the both of you, right? <laughs> We're not that kind of Lutherans. But anyway, they're saints because of their they have faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But as good as Grant and Stephanie are, and they're a wonderful couple. I mean, you're taking away my niece, basically, right? As good as they are, they still, both of them, just like all of us, need a Savior. Need a Savior from sin. Need a Savior from sin. And even couples that are in love, even deep love, even powerful love, even wonderful love, sin. They hurt one another by their actions. Um... And sometimes this team, this we that you're trying to build up is going gonna, is gonna to break down because someone said or did something that, that just rubs you the wrong way. And I, when it gets really rough and, it's, and you're, you're about to get in the car and drive to the, back to the parents or the other side of town or whatever you want to do, I encourage you to stop first and just pray. Pray for yourself. Pray for your spouse. Pray for your relationship. Let the Lord guide you. Forgiveness says that even though I remember the incident, I'm not going to hold it against you. It's an act of the will, okay? All right. So to help you remember the good and forget the bad, a marriage of two believers, that's what you are, who are in God's Word, the Bible, who accept one another as Christ accepted you, right? Who are, who are living their life in a community 
of believers. That's the C. That's the third letter. You know where we're going with this? Bible, accept, live that life in a community of believers. And certainly that involves church, and I encourage you all to make that a pro- every Sunday worship a priority. I, mean, I, I don't think you have to be there every time the door opens. Well, that'd be helpful, though, but you don't have to. <laughs> But make it a priority, because if it's not on the list, it gets further down and further down, and then you hadn't gone in 20 years, and you go, hmm, it's hard. But live out that faith that you share in community, and not just the church, but, but your Christian, Christian friends, Christian family. Allow their influence and prayers, and let them know, and let them pray for you, encourage you. See, Christian community. Speaking of memory, um, remembering things. I want to give you this acrostic to help you remember. There's a date that you got to remember, and since you already said Stephanie is the has the more elephant uh, memory, you got to work at remembering this day. Definitely, Grant, both of you, and all kinds of things will help you to remember this day. You got pictures. You got a wedding album. You got the rings on your fingers that'll eventually be there. You got Facebook friends, right? That are going to chime in and say, "Hey, happy anniversary! Great wedding! Awesome!" Being a car- part of a Christian community is going to help you to remember your marriage as well. You'll be surrounded by people married 10 years, 20 years, 40 years, 60 years. We've got a couple of 60-year people in our church. And you see them, you see them holding hands in church, and you see them helping each other into the car, and you go, wow, how did they do it? And you realize that God has enabled them to love one another for 60 years, or 50 or 10, or whatever God may give you. What a blessing. You're going to be in the pew, maybe, good Lord willing, one day in the front going, wow, our son, our daughter. Wow, our grandson, wow, you never know. Well, why is it so important to remember this day? Because it's the day that you stood before your creator, your redeemer, your sanctifier. It's the day you declared your love and you pledged your faithfulness. It's the day that you publicly confirmed and affirmed that I have chosen you, Stephanie, to be my lifelong companion, and I have chosen you, Grant, to be my lifelong companion. And you invited God to witness those vows, and you invited God to be an active part of continuing on active part of your relationship. So we got Bible, we got accept, we got Christian community. We only got a couple letters left and it's and it's closing. I know your knees are probably knocking. You're like, when's the vows coming? The next letter is old. O for old. Uh, we all grew up with families that did certain things certain ways. And um, I would imagine your upbringing is very different than yours. Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, different families do different things. Some open on Christmas presents on Christmas Eve, some on Christmas Day. And I'm sure you, develop, you delve into your differences. We always do it like, no, we don't. We always do it like this. And so there's those things in your childhood, those deep-rooted, long-standing traditions that you, I encourage you to hold on to them. The ones that you both like, the ones that benefit you, the ones that are, are going to be a blessing to you in your marriage. Hold on to that, some of that old stuff. Don't just dis, you know, get rid of all of it. Hold on to some of that old stuff. And that leads us to our last letter, N. We appreciate the past, but we live in the present. You come from different families, different, you're not crying anymore, what's the (laughs) rub? Different families, different perspectives. You're gonna bring new things, because there's ways you did. Her dad makes a killer swordfish. You know, I know that. And maybe your dad does something killer, Who, who knows what they do? But you're gonna bring some new stuff into this relationship. New things for your, your relationship with each other, with your relationship with your family and friend, new patterns, new traditions, new understanding, not just new for the sake of new, but because it's a blessing and you, you got two wonderful people colliding together. Something new is gonna happen and it's gonna be awesome, right? So what does that spell, Stephanie? Bacon. Bacon, that's right. <laughs> Stephanie inspired me. She um. She was staying at the bed and breakfast, and I said, what are you eating for breakfast the next morning? She said, bacon. (laughs) So as believers in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, let me encourage you to have the Bible, the Word of God in your head, in your heart, in your hands even, to accept one another as Christ accepted you, to live together in community, to hold on to those old, long-standing traditions that are a blessing and a benefit in history, and to make new memories and new traditions. So there you have it. That's your acrostic. And maybe tomorrow morning as you're eating that bacon, maybe you'll remember, what was the B and what was the C? And you may not remember, and that's okay. But there's one person who's perfect at remembering and perfect at forgetting. And you have a relationship with him already through faith. 
His name is Jesus Christ, and his relationship with you is based on remembering and forgetting. He remembers your needs. He remembers your concerns. He remembers your dreams. He hears your prayers. He promises he'll never leave nor forsake you. He promises to work all things to your good, but he also forgets. He forgets your sin completely. He died on the cross for you, and by that act, he declares that he keeps no record of wrongs. Because remember that perfect love out of 1 Corinthians? Keeps no record of wrongs. That's the love God has for you. He keeps no record of wrongs. And so the, your Savior says today, Grant, Stephanie, because I love you, died for you, and forgiven you, and I keep no record of your wrongs, keep no record of wrongs with one another. Or strive to as you love one another. Well, it's, said, it's been said that the key to a successful marriage is to keep your eyes wide open before marriage and half closed during marriage. Well, during your life together, may your eyes be wide open and focus on the love of Christ that he's given to you and given to you and to all your friends and family that know Christ as Lord and Savior. And know that you've been forgiven and redeemed by God. And so remember this day, remember your commitment. Maybe you can remember the word bacon. I don't know if it helps. But forget each other's faults, forget each other's failures. Don't hold them against one another for love keeps no record of wrongs. It won't be easy, but God will help you. And by God's grace, all things are possible. May his love always dwell in your hearts and your home. Amen. Are you ready? Grant, will you have this woman to be your wife, to live with her in holy marriage according to the word of God? Will you love her, comfort her, Honor her and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be husband to her as long as you both shall live? I will. We pointed out yesterday that that was the appropriate grammatical response. <laughs> Stephanie, will you have this man to be your husband? to live with him in holy marriage according to the word of God. Will you love him, comfort him, honor him, obey him, keep him in sickness and health? And forsaking all others, be wife to him as long as you both shall live? I will. Okay. Grant, repeat after me. I grant. I grant. In the presence of God and these witnesses. In the presence of God and these witnesses. Take you, Stephanie. Take you, Stephanie. To be my wife. To be my wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until death parts us. Until death parts us. And I pledge you my faithfulness. And I pledge you my faithfulness. Stephanie, repeat after me. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. In the presence of God and these witnesses. In the presence of God and these witnesses. Take you, Grant. Take you, Grant. To be my husband. To be my husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until death parts us. Until death parts us. And I pledge you my faithfulness. And I pledge you my faithfulness. It's time for the rings. Repeat after me, Grant. Receive this ring. Receive this ring. As a pledge and token. As a pledge and token. Of wedded love and faithfulness. Of wedded love and faithfulness. Okay, Stephanie, repeat after me. Receive this ring. Receive this ring. As a pledge and token. And token of wedded love and faithfulness. Of wedded love and, and faithfulness. Faithfulness. <laughs> Grant your blessing, O Lord, to your servants, Grant and Stephanie, that they may be ever mindful of their solemn pledge and trust in your mercy, abound evermore in love all their days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Nina, please. Now that Grant and Stephanie have consented together in holy marriage, have given themselves to each other by their solemn pledges, and have declared the same before God and these witnesses, I pronounce them to be husband and wife in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. What God has joined together, let no one put asunder. Amen. 
The Almighty and gracious God abundantly grant you his favor and sanctify and bless you with the blessing given our first parents in paradise, that you may please him in both body and soul and live together in holy love until your life's end. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, our Heavenly Father, grant that by your blessing, grant and step, and may live together according to your word and promise. Strengthen them in faithfulness and love toward each other. Sustain and defend them in all trial and temptation. Help them to live in faith toward you in the communion of your holy church and in loving service to each other, that they may ever enjoy your heavenly blessings. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art Amen. in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The eternal God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, grant you his Holy Spirit, be with you, and richly bless you, now and forever. Amen. Please face the... It's my privilege and blessing uh, to announce to you Mr. and Mrs. Grant and Stephanie Brackeen. You may kiss your bride. Sun is shining, dogwoods are coming in blue. 
Put on your white dress, yeah, cause a baby, it's a good day for me and you. I call my mama and daddy, baby, you call yours too. Put on your white dress, yeah, cause a baby, it's a good day for me and you. I know you by now, which means I know what you're thinking about. Your friends, they keep asking about us. Every day passing, it's time this fairy tale came true.